Yes. Uh, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, the effects of HIV virus on an infected woman or in, during pregnancy. Uh, one, of, one of the effects that uh, it, it, uh, HIV virus leads to uh, uh, it can lead to a spontaneous, spontaneous abortion or that's a miscarriage. Uh, secondly, it leads to a preterm labor. Uh, thirdly, thirdly, it leads to stillbirth. And fourthly, it leads to giving a giving birth to a child with a low weight, low weight, uh, low weight child. Uh, uh, by co even the pre pregnancy can be even complicated by the bacterial pneumonia, one of the s conditions that affects a woman infected with HIV and either bacterial pneumonia, uh, genital tract infections. Uh, these are the conditions that can affect pregnancy. Uh, opportunistic infections such as uh, uh, herpes zoster. Uh, herpes zoster uh, there's an opportunistic infection that can infect, that can, that can compli complicate pregnancy. Herpes uh, uh, zoster, yes. Uh, um, secondly, a uh, mother to child transmission. A uh, mother child transmission that's what I want to take to, to talk more about. Uh, this is the transmission of HIV virus from mother to child. And there are, there are different stages at which mother to child transmission can take. First of all, is during the antipartum period. That this, this transmission risk is range to from 15 to 25 percent. Uh, it may it mainly occur, this is trans, trans, transplacental, it occurs in the utero. Uh, another stage uh, where on which mother child transmission takes place, this is uh, during the intrapartum. intrapartum. This occurs mainly due to direct contact with the blood or cervicovaginal secretion during, during the passage of the baby in the vaginal in the birth canal. Uh, uh, and third is, uh, is postpartum period. Uh, postpartum period this is when a, a child can access or can be susceptible to HIV and AIDS uh, during breastfeeding. Uh, and there are several factors that that uh, uh, that that affects mother to child transmission. One of the factors, uh, category number one, is uh, maternal factors. Under maternal factors that uh, from that causes mother-child transmission, one of them is uh, the immune, the immunological, immunological of the mother, the viral, viral, viral load of the mother. Secondly, thirdly, is the sex, sexual practices of the mother and the nutrition status of the mother. Those are the maternal factors that uh, necessitate the transmission of HIV and AIDS from. From mother to child, and uh, under nutrition status that a uh, mother eats food with limited vitamin A is likely a uh, is or a child is likely to be susceptible to HIV and AIDS. Since vitamin A has contained immunoglobin A that fights effectively to the HIV strains, and a mother who you, who, 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 who who doesn't use who does not uh, involve herself in Protected sex during pregnancy is likely to sex make her is or a baby to be successful to HIV virus type. A mother who doesn't adhere, uh, adhere to antiretrotherapy uh, by taking uh, the drugs, antiretroviral drugs as recommended by the physician, uh, she's, she's likely to have a high viral load that she may end up transmitting the HIV and virus to the child. A second category. These are the uh, the fetal factors that uh, factors that affect mother-to-child transmission. One of the fetal factors that affect mother-to-child transmission is the uh, immaturity of the features. Immaturity of the feature. The features not properly mature. And uh, uh, unto this is that an immature features means that uh, the immune system, even the immune system, is mature. So the it is, the baby is incompetent. Uh, against the viral suppression, uh, even the, the baby being mature means that the genital, the genital the GIT, the gastrointestinal tract, uh, is uh, incompetent again. The mucosal virus is not well developed to 
so HIV can easily pass through the walls of the GIT and she or he or she can end up being successful to HIV virus. Even uh, those are those are uh, the fetal fetal factors that affect uh, a mother's child transmission. Another one is uh, uh, obstetric factors. Uh, one of the obstetric factors that affect mother's child transmission is uh, prolonged ruptured membranes. Uh, if ruptured membranes that take place during delivery, if it's prolonged to almost four, four, two, two hours to four hours, it increases the now, the number of chances of the baby being susceptible to HIV and AIDS. Uh, Electric cesarean or obstetric so, uh, services are uh, electric cesarean reduces the transmission of mother to child transmission, um, mother to child transmission of HIV and AIDS. Um, uh, the uh, operative, the vaginal operative delivery, that's one of the fact obstetric factors that increases the transmission from mother to child yes uh, and one is an uh, invasive fetal test this increases the chance of the child being susceptible to AIDS uh, those are the obstetric factors that uh, from that affect mother to child transmission um, there are several ways uh, on which uh, uh, the ministry the ministries of health in collaboration with the WHO, the World Health Organization, that's WHO, on ways to combat this, on ways to cut, combat these factors that affect marriage child transmission. One, one of them is a universal screening intervention. Uh, under universal screening intervention, uh, a woman, uh, a woman, when, when a pregnant woman visited, visits a clinic or a clinic, she is expected to first of all a woman undergoes a pre pre counseling where she is she 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 is advised more informed more about the importance of testing uh, undergoing a HIV test uh, after that she she accepts she accepts to, to undertake a HIV test after immediately after undertaking a test she undergoes a post test counseling after uh, after receiving the results, whether positive or negative. Uh, secondly, it's a behavior intervention. Under behavior intervention, this, uh, this is the second point on the prevention of mother child transmission, that is behavior intervention. Under behavior intervention, the key, key, key concept here is that it is to enhance the reduction in behaviors that promote the, that makes the baby to be successful to HIV virus. This is a uh, uh, the mother to be taught on ways on to be on, to be taught on importance of engaging in protective sex during pregnancy. Uh, to on to, should, to be taught on importance of nutritional adherence. Uh, the mother should be uh, importance of nutritional adherence, and the the mother is. Uh, Oh, sorry. Those are, those are only those that are the factors that uh, fall under behavior intervention. There are a lot of behaviors. It, it, just a just a, a just a matter of uh, changing a certain behavior that you see it can it can it can make your baby your baby being susceptible to HIV and AIDS. Even you can you must you should stop having several partners. Those are the things. Just any behavior you think it can make your baby safe in case you are infected with HIV and AIDS. The third, the third, in fact, the third intervention is a uh, uh, contraception, a uh, use of contraception. Uh, so, an infected mother should make use of contraception. This mainly condom or that. Uh, there are different types of contraception that can prevent the baby being susceptible to to AIDS. Yes. Uh, another one is uh, uh, antiretrotherapy during pregnancy. Yes, this a, a woman should be placed under antiretrotherapy program during her pregnancies to make her baby safe. This is where uh, a, a woman is given a dose of uh, nevirapine during delivery. 
and a baby is given a dose of nevirapine immediately after the baby is born so that the, so that to prevent the transmission of HIV and AIDS from the mother to child. Uh, that is an anti-retrotherapy anti during pregnancy. So those are the factors, those are the ways on which they can be used to, to prevent mother to child transmission. Thank you.